Hi, it's Chester Topper from Blue Pecan Computer Training and in this video we're going to look at recording macros using relative references. My scenario is uh, I've got this little table here where I've imported some data from another system into Excel. And basically I've got sales data for each of these salespeople, 12 months of sales data, but unfortunately the data has come in to Excel arranged all in the same column, whereas it actually needs to be transposed across these columns here. I'm going to have to use relative references because I want to, I don't want to copy and paste each record or each set of data into the same uh, row. Um, by default, when you record macros, Excel records the actual cell addresses that you paste into. So initially I would paste into row 2, and then when I ran it again, it would also paste into row 2. Now obviously I could go through and record a whole macro that copied and pasted each individual set of data into its relevant row, but that would seem a rather long-winded way of recording the macro. So using relative references doesn't record, uh, allows you to uh, get away from recording actual cell addresses and instead it records your movement from your original position. So you use an offset method. So for example, you would offset by uh, one column to the right or one column to the left or one row above or one row below. And that will actually allow us to achieve a macro uh, that will work for each set of data as we move down. Uh, eventually I'll show you how to write a little bit of code uh, that will actually automate the whole procedure. So uh, initially we'll have to use our little macro shortcut key on each individual name and it will do the job but then I'll show you how to actually just um, automate the whole process so it will go all the way down here and transpose the data uh, just with one use of the shortcut key. So let's get started. Um, I am, before I get started, I'm actually going to click into the correct position. Um, it's important to think about where, uh, what your active cell is, where your active cell is before you start recording. Essentially, when I use my shortcut key, um, I want to have selected a name and then it copies and pastes the relevant data to uh, the row. Uh, if I was, for example, here, I started recording, then I moved here. The macro will run on the cell that is three columns to the left. Whereas if I click here, I'm ready to go. It will run its set of actions from this cell, selecting down to here and copying and pasting. So I'm in the correct position. So I'm going to record the macro. I'm going to call it uh, transpose data. I'm going to give it a shortcut key, control shift. Uh, let's say H, and I'm going to store it in this workbook. I'm not going to give it a description, that's an optional thing for you. Click on OK. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select from that cell down 13 rows. I'm going to copy. I'm going to click up. I'm going to select a cell one row above my original selection. And then I'm going to paste special transpose, click on OK. I would then need to delete the original data, so selecting 13 cells below where I was previously, I'm going to delete, and then I'm going to need to insert a blank row and then select Brenda. So I'm then in a position to run my shortcut key again and it will run the same set of processes. OK, so and now I can stop recording and I'm ready to go. So let's see if it works. So I'm going to do Control Shift H, 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 etc, etc. And you can see that it works fine. What it's not doing, however, is doing all of the records at the same time. Now, you're not going to be able to achieve that without actually writing a very small little bit of code uh, around your recorded macro. Um, and we're actually going to use something called a do while loop. What we want to say is 
rep loop this code that we've recorded while whilst the cell in column A isn't blank. So it'll go through and it'll keep running until it gets to a blank cell. So I've got another example of our spreadsheet. I'm just going to copy that so I've always got a, a fresh example. Um, which we'll try and get the macro to work on in a minute. But to add a little bit of code to our recorded macro, we'll need to open up the Visual Basic uh, application. So if I click on that button there, here is my macro that I've recorded. Um, if you can't see your macro code, what you'll need to do is get used to using this little Project Explorer here uh, feature here. So I can see that this is my my workbook that I'm in, relative references, and there should be a modules folder within that. And if you expand that, you should see at least one module in there. And my, if I double click on here, um, module two, this is a container for my macros, and here's my macro here. So I can see that's the name of the macro that I had earlier on. This green text here is just code for human consumption. The computer doesn't read it. You can see it's prefixed by a little apostrophe. So that's just for me to read. It's in green. It means basically the computer will not read it. But the rest of this data is what was recorded. The rest of this code, rather, is what was recorded when we recorded our macro. So I know that that works. So I'm just going to add a little bit of code up front here. Uh, very, very simple. All I do is I write do while active cell dot value is not equal to empty and then I just need to finish off that code by writing loop there and just to make this a little bit easier to read I might indent this not necessary but it makes it easier to read so it's going to loop this code while this condition is met okay so let's see if this actually works still control shift H it's my shortcut key. New set of data. So I'm clicking here, Control Shift H, and it's done the whole thing for me just with one press of the shortcut key. Okay, so using relative references when you're recording macros and adding a little bit of code into your Visual Basic environment to further automate the whole thing. Okay, hopefully that's been useful.